Our butterfly transect data sheet. We have already looked at the top a little bit, but we're gonna finish filling it out um, entirely. So we've got all our basic stuff here. Um, we recorded our GPS point because it's no adjusted. It was our first visit. So uh, we're gonna record our start time right when we start our survey, right when you start walking the line, not when you start filling this out. This should be the last thing you do before you start looking for butterflies. Um, this should be the last thing you do, or the first thing you do when you reach the end of your transect. So I guess I probably could have put this as the last thing to pop up on the screen, but I just thought of that now, so I didn't. So this would be the last thing you would put on this side of the paper, probably. Um, so as we're going, if we see a monarch, we write that down. The sex, you can write out M or male or F or female or U. Um, what is it doing? It's eating, it's nectaring. Uh, eating is fine, I'll figure it out. What is it eating on? We are not going to leave our transect to figure out what it's eating. Um, if, it, if you can't tell from where you're at, try to come back to that spot if you can remember. Um, if you can't ID it from however far away you are. Um, if not, it's just unknown and that is fine. Um, detection distance in meters. So this one's kind of far away. It's lucky we got our, um, it's lucky we know what plant this is and our angle is 25. So we do that for each butterfly we see, monarch, female, flying. There's, it's flying, it's not eating, so we leave this blank. It's quite a ways away at a pretty big angle. Our angles, I don't care which side it's on, it's just the angle. There's no plus or minus angle, it's just whatever the number is. Um, then we saw a regal, we can't tell what sex it is. It's basking, um, not eating, so we leave that blank. Uh, right in front of us, six meters away. And then we saw one more monarch female basking a little ways away and a little off one direction. And at that point, once we get to the end of our transect, we're gonna write this down. We're then going to do the floral and habitat assessment. Um, you could write notes after you write down the time um, and then uh, anything you think deserves to be noted, note it. And then um, was a monarch and or regal fritillary seen between entering and leaving the field? When you got to your car or when you left your car to when you got back in your car, did you see one of these butterflies? It doesn't necessarily have to be on the transect. If you saw it on the transect, it'll for sure get circled, but while you were at this site, did you see one of these two butterflies? Yep, we've already talked about the protractor a little bit. They are 90s over here, 90s over here. I do not care which side you saw these on. Um, our transect line is zero, so anything directly in front of you will be at zero degrees, and anything immediately to the right will be 90. Just kind of showing how protractors work again. This one's roughly at 31. Um, if you would expand the transect, um, they would, even though this is at the same, uh, same like distance from the transect, if you uh, get the angle to it, it is a much shallower angle. Um, you don't have to have a giant protractor to know what the angle is, you just have to look down the line to see um, about what the angle is. So there's 19, there's eight. We, this would be a pretty spectacular sighting at roughly 150 meters if we're going to scale, but um, theoretically possible, please don't put that down. Um, yeah, we don't, we don't need the protractor if you've practiced without it. So um, where to survey, uh, get to one of your GPS points that you were given, only survey in front of you in the area between the start and end points. 
A butterfly that you notice behind you does not count, exclude it. If you notice a butterfly like as it's flying past your face, like coming from the back, exclude it. Um, be careful at the end of the transect, make sure that butterflies found are within the transect and not spotted beyond the end. It doesn't happen very often. I think I've only had a couple times in my 200 surveys where I'm like, is that butterfly in or out? Just get to the end and you can write it down when you see it, but when you get to the end, look right or left. And if that spot was outside of 90 degrees um, at that point, then we would exclude it. So here is what a survey might look like. Um, I walk into my point, I get there, I turn around and I see a butterfly behind me. We're not gonna count that one. Uh, even though it's right behind me, we can count it for um, monarch or regal scene, but we're not gonna count it on the transect. As I'm walking, I see a butterfly 10 meters in front of me, right on the line, we're gonna count that one. I see one way off in the distance at about 60 degrees, we're gonna count that one as well. Um, we see one about 15 meters, uh, 20 degrees, yep, counting that one for sure. And then we get to the end and we see another butterfly. We're not going to count that one. It is past the end of our transect. Um, the survey area extends as far as you can see in either direction, left or right, but not um, past the end point. And then if we turn around and we see a butterfly right behind us, we're like, well, how'd I miss you? Doesn't matter. Um, you didn't see it during the transect. It does not count. Um, you also record these butterflies where you saw them, not where they ended up. So wherever you first saw the butterfly is the angle and distance that you would record. They might move on you. They might go back to the same spot. That's not where we're recording them. Record them from where you first saw them. Where they end up does not matter. Do keep an eye on a butterfly, especially if it looks like it's kind of flying with you after you've seen it. Um, we don't want to double count butterflies as well. So keep an eye, do not double count butterflies. What questions do we have on the butterfly data sheet, the transect data sheet? For the behavior activity, is there a defined set uh, that they have to stick to when filling in this category? Um, no, we added egg laying last year, so I'm not going to limit you, but don't be too creative. Re record what you saw um, as plainly as you can. You're probably going to see flying. You might see basking. Um, you might see nectaring. Outside of that, it's like 2% for the rest of them. So um, those are the main ones. Um, yeah, don't, don't get too fancy with it, but um, just record what you saw. And how can they tell the difference between basking and nectaring? Um, nectaring, they will be like on the flower basking would be more opening their wings, um, trying to catch some sunlight usually that could be interchanged with resting probably, um, but it would not be on a flower. Um, I suppose you could see a butterfly landed on a flower and not drinking, but um, I'm fine with the assumption that if it's on a flower, but too far away to tell if it is drinking or not, we're going to assume it is. Um, so yeah, nectaring would be basically any time it's on a flower, unless you can definitively say it is not drinking from that flower right now. And if two butterflies are attached together, uh, would they That's use... mating. Mating, yeah. 